Okay, so uh, the next trick is to go ahead and paint this. And <clears throat> first thing I want to do, let me get this out of the way. I have a little canister for my Gamsol. That's the uh, mineral spirits. It looks like this. Make sure that when you buy it, it doesn't say Gamvar, which is the varnish version. You want the Gamsol. Okay, and so I just have the Gamsol in this container. It looks yellow because I was painting with some yellowish orange paint. Um, it's not going rancid or anything. Okay, so I'm going to clean out my brush. When you clean out your brush, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is dip. Don't scrub in your mineral spirits. That will waste a lot of it. You just dip in there. You get a paper towel, put it in, and squeeze. Notice when I'm doing it, I'm squeezing and bending and pulling the, the paint out. So just bend and squeeze. One or two dips with a bend and squeeze, yeah, and your brush will be clean, okay? So I'm using a Trek L brush. I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, uh, one of those ivory synthetic bristles. It's got a really nice shape to it. So I'm gonna use that. For my other one, I just use this Blick Synthetic. It's a little bit softer, but both of them have square tips. And that's what you need to keep your rectangles nice and clean, okay? So if you got your paint the right consistency and pretty much the Van Gogh paint is the right consistency to start with. So you shouldn't have to put linseed, in it, linseed oil in it. So I'm just getting little blobs of paint on my brush. I don't know if you can see, but I'm smearing them down. I don't want to get too out of control. So I have a bit of paint here and oil paint smears and blends really easily. Just think that you're frosting a cupcake or something and you're trying to make it look as beautiful as you can. Okay, so I haven't gone up to the edges. I'm gonna use the edge of my, the tip of my brush. Okay, I don't have too much paint on here. If you get too much paint on your brush, keep a paper towel handy. It's gonna be to your benefit to just wipe some of it down so you don't have big clumps of paint. Um, messing up your beautiful value scale. Okay, so you can see that I'm using the tip of the square brush right up to the edge of my line. Okay, oops, got a little bit too close there. So I'm pushing it up to the edge and pulling the paint back. What I don't want is a lot of paint building up on the edge. So I'm putting the paint on the edge and pulling it back into the center, okay? And there we go, we have that nice and neat. Flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you don't hit the white on the end, okay, or the black on the other end. So I'm just gonna take some of this paint, load up my brush a little bit more just going to creep it over there, walk it across till I get to the edge. Also notice that I'm using my finger to kind of support my hand. I, you probably can't see it from how I'm doing it, but my finger is underneath here so that I can control the brush and I'm not like wobbling with just the brush touching. That's like really wobbly. Okay, so I've got my knuckle actually on the, the surface of the board to control. And that allows me to get right in there, just build it up nice nice and clean to the edge. So obviously, obviously you can see that it's a great advantage to have a flat brush, square tipped brush that's nice and even to do this assignment. Filbert, you can do it with a filbert, but it's gonna be a lot harder to control. Okay, you can't see this, but I've got quite a lot of paint built up in the middle. I'm using my brush um, <clears throat> perpendicular to my canvas so like this and I'm I'm scraping the paint off so I don't want to leave too much paint down one other problem that students always do is rather than cover the reason I said cupcake is that you want to cover the the gesso and I, I forgot to talk about that you want to cover up your board with a layer of paint okay we're not just staining the uh the gesso it's got to be a layer of paint and here i'm just going to try to do a very slow clean edge 
That looks pretty good. And now I'm just painting the stroke all the same direction away from my body. It's easier to control that way. All right, there we go. So the real test is once I start to do the number three and the number seven squares. And when I get in between these two, you'll be able to see if you have the right amount of contrast. So I've gone ahead and mixed up my number seven value. Okay, so five is in the middle, nine is black, seven is gonna go halfway between my gray and my black. And maybe we should just turn this around so you can see. There you go. So this value went here. I'm gonna put this value right here in the middle. And when you get this one down, it's easy to get these last two. So the key to this, and this should translate into your knowledge of painting, is when you're trying to figure out the values of something, when you're observing it or when you're putting it in your painting, you want to think of black and white as bookends. That's as dark as it can go and white is as light as it can go, obviously. So you want to put those dark and light accents in first so that you can figure out the in-between values. All of these values in between all these values in between are going to be really difficult to find out on their own because you have nothing to compare it against, okay? So this exercise is all about teaching you how to see and compare. So we're done here. This is one I've done before. And you can see that I've got my middle gray, my number seven value, and this is transitioning pretty well. When I do this one, I might find out that these are too close. So. If you do, if it's too close, then you're going to have to go back and fix it. So it's it can be a frustrating experience. Um, the key, like I said, is learning how to compare. Okay, so do this. <clears throat> we'll have this due on Tuesday, and I'll just have you submit a, a phone image. Make sure that you have no glare on it. Try to take a good, clean image. Submit that to me on Monday night so that I can put it together on Tuesday. Um, I'll have all of your images up and I can do a quick critique and pass off those who have done a good job and unfortunately send the rest of you back to the drawing board. All right. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.